Hi everyone, I'm Juliette. I am a design lead at Science Works, and today I'll be showing you how you can make a room in your home into a camera obscura. So a camera obscura is a really simple device used historically by artists and scientists. Um, it was made by creating a completely dark chamber and drilling a hole into one of the walls. Now, the hole allowed light to come through, um, and it allows for a projection on the other side of the wall, which we'll get to see when we try it out. Artists loved this because it allowed them to trace landscapes and learn perspective and viewpoints. And scientists loved it because it allowed them to view astrological events like a solar eclipse without having to stare directly at the sun. As well as the device itself is a really fascinating uh, demonstration of how light travels. So, there's a few things that you'll need if you want to try this at home. You'll need a room with a window and preferably a blank wall on the opposite side. You'll also need something um, in abundance to cover your window with. You can use cardboard or uh, black sheets. In my case, I have a bunch of paper bags, so I'm going to be using those. Um, as well as you'll need some scissors and a ruler and some painter's tape. Now, you can use other tape. But I highly suggest painter's tape because it's strong enough to hold everything together and it won't chip or peel any tape or uh, paint off of your uh, walls when you put it up. With that, let's get started. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our ruler and we're going to measure out a box that's two inches by two inches um, on a piece of cardboard. And then you're going to cut your box out. Now it doesn't have to be a perfect box. Um, this is just going to be an opening for our aperture. There you go. So next we'll start taping together all our cardboard boxes and we'll incorporate the box that we just cut out um, into one of those panels. And you want to make sure that the cardboard isn't going to be covering up this hole. You don't want that. You want that. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take a smaller piece of cardboard and make the aperture that we're going to put over the square that we cut out. Now for the aperture, we want to make it a circle. So we're going to take our ruler and measure out about one and a half inches, um, just in a straight line, and that's the width of the circle that you want. Um, another easy way to do this without a ruler is uh, take the inside of a toilet paper roll and just trace it. like so. And that's the perfect size. And then you're going to cut it out. And there you go, you have your aperture. So next thing you're going to do is you're going to take your aperture and tape it to the box that you made. There you go. So now that you have all your pieces ready to be assembled, 
we're going to start by taping together all your cardboard pieces, or in my case, paper bags. Once you have all your paper bags taped together, you're going to mount that up against the window of your room. Make sure to save enough space for your aperture panel to go. You want to make sure that the aperture is the only source of light coming into the room. So you want to cover up any spaces where light can creep through. Finally, you'll close the door and turn off all the lights in that room. You'll wait for about 10 minutes or less for your eyes to fully adjust to the dark. And then you should be able to notice the projection appear. Whoa, look at that. Projection is upside down. I wonder why that is. That must be because light travels in a straight line, unless its path is blocked or altered by something like a mirror or water. But because there's a hole allowing light to come in, all of the light is essentially being funneled through the aperture, and the paths of light are being crossed over each other to create this flipped projection of light. This is actually the same way that light travels through our own eyes, but the only reason that we know or we see things as right side up is because our brains know to flip the image, so we're not stumbling around all the time. Now if you're interested in making other experiments in your home, check out ScienceWorks Online. We have lots of great tutorials for you to follow at home. Thanks for watching! Stay curious.